because we always miss something. You always miss something. Uh, that's because I learned from you. Well, that's true, you know. So you should have taught me better. Yeah, next time, Sam, <laughs> next time. I'll work on it, I'll work Thank on it. Thank you. Sometimes you're hard to train, though. A for effort, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Sam's Garage, presented by Hemsaw. this episode of Sam's Garage. Sam and Kevin get ready to install the new cooling system in the 68 Chevelle. Sam stops by Hemsall headquarters where the 57 Thunderbird is getting prepped to separate the body from the frame. Then Sam tests the Holly EFI system they'll be using for the engine on the Project T-Bird. Lastly, Sam takes us on a more in-depth overview of the Holly engine management system used for the Coyote engine. The 68 Chevelle gets an updated cooling system from Champion Radiators. Sam and Kevin take us through the process of preparing the radiator, fans, shroud, and fittings before installing in the car. The new cooling system is designed to fit perfectly in the Chevelle to retain that factory fit and finish. All right, Kevin and I are getting ready to do the cooling system in the Chevelle. And anytime you guys are doing an engine swap, this is gonna be one of the most crucial portions of your swap because a lot of times when they do engine swaps, they overheat. So you gotta really know the cooling system. You want a big radiator, we went with Champion. They do an awesome job of cooling systems. We've got a three row, looks factory correct, doesn't it? Yeah, like we're gonna go back through it like we did on the uh, Buick and, and put the factory fan shroud on mm -hmm. it, even though it's electric fans, it just yeah. kinda gives it an extra twist. That's Absolutely, cool. it looks really good. And then we've got the lower hose, the upper hose. We've got the necks that screw into the radiator. We've even got a reservoir, dual fans, a shroud, and a wiring kit. So we're gonna show you guys how to install all these parts. I like to use a 160, no more than a 175 thermostat on an engine swap, just to keep heat down in the engine bay. Now this radiator is gonna come with these screw-in bungs and they've got an O-ring on them, it's very important. You don't have to use Teflon tape on this, but you do want to make sure to lube that O-ring so that when you screw it into its place, it's not going to bind on you. And then, due to the size of it, you are going to have to use a big wrench, so you don't want to go too tight on it, okay? Just snug it. If you go too much, you'll actually bind it into the threads and it will never come out again. Another thing you have to do on this radiator, there's a steam vent right here, it comes with a plug if you don't have an LS engine, but if you do have an LS engine, you are going to have to use the fitting. Don't forget to use Teflon tape on this one. This kit also comes with this nice nifty filter, and what this will do is if there was any debris from the manufacturing process of this radiator, it's gonna catch it and keep your water pump living a long time. Not only that, but you can kinda of get a visual of what your coolant looks like and when you have to address changing it. That is one nice reservoir. And the way Kevin mounted it onto the shroud, it makes it one big module, very nice deal. Now, when you guys go to install the fan shroud onto the radiator core, you're gonna have to drill into the bottom and top sides of the core itself. Now, this is a false space, so don't be scared to drill into that hole, but make sure the drill is perfectly straight because you're so close to the bottom portion of the core, if you have a slight angle, you're gonna go into the core, costing yourself a radiator. What Travis did right here with the steam line, he made Dash 4 using Holly steam vent kit, Dash 4 nice braided hose, matches everything else in the engine bay, gives it a nice updated modern flair. The reservoir that Kevin mounted on the side of the shroud looks and works really good, gives us plenty of access to get a hose on it. We're gonna run it underneath the radiator over here to the top, keeping everything in the engine bay nice and clean. Okay, so we got two fans from Champion. We got two relays because the Holly EFI has two outputs and they're ground triggers. So on the relay itself, we've got the 
switch on going to the power wire, okay? Because the ground is gonna control by the Holly. When you turn off the switch, the Holly's gonna shut off the fans. Up here, I got one connector, two fuses. Down there, I've got the signal to the two relays together and being powered up by one of these cables. The power for the fans gonna come from the relay. The ground for the fans are gonna go down to the core support. That's gonna take care of the wiring for the relays. Sam, this came out really nice. I like the fact that the factory shroud and, and clamp held this whole thing in. We didn't have to modify anything, no brackets or anything. The wiring you did came out really nice. The reason why Champion Radiator fits so well is because they designed these per the specification of the car and your application yeah. in-house. And if they didn't have your application, they can very easily custom make one for you in their facility. And for as long as Skip owns this car, Champion Radiator is gonna give him a lifetime warranty. I'm sure we won't have to use it. I don't think so. Sam's Garage, presented by Hemsaw. Sam takes a trip to Oklahoma to meet Doug at the Hemsaw headquarters where the 57 Ford Thunderbird is getting ready for a new custom chassis. They begin by removing the old hardware that secures the body to the frame. Once completed, They'll carefully lift the body off the frame so they can start fabrication on the new one. Well, here we are. Doug and I did mention that we were going to build a chassis for the 57 Thunderbird project from scratch. And what better place to do it than right here at Hemsaw because he's got all the equipment and the talent to knock this thing out with ease, right? Yeah, you know, Sam, we've spent quite a bit of time. We took a look at the material sizes that we're going to need. We're going to show everybody at home what to do and, and try to get them to avoid any possible mistakes if they want to go ahead and build their own chassis. So this is just going to be a lot of fun. Yep. And while we're doing it, we're going to upgrade the front to a whole new suspension. We went to Scott's Hot Rods and got a whole new front clip. We went to Moser and got a whole new rear nine inch housing and we're using Scott's four link conversion for the rear. It's going to be a real nice chassis when it's done. Yeah. And one of the things is if you've driven one of these old Thunderbirds before, I mean, they've got a wonderful look, but you know, it's a 1957 and it drives like a 57. So when we're all done, it's going to drive like a modern car today. And that's going to be the really cool thing about it. And you're never going to be able to tell because from the outside, it's going to look exactly like a 57 Thunderbird. Now, before you guys go ripping things apart, you got to really take a look and see what needs to be addressed. For instance, exhaust pipes are bolted to the bumper. So there's a whole bunch of exhaust clamps and exhaust coming through. We're gonna unbolt the 3 7 16 remove the exhaust pipe. We're gonna remove the gas tank because two of the mounts are actually held onto the body. And then we're gonna remove the brake fluid. Right. And then go through and check and make sure all the wires that are connected to the chassis, for instance, the license plate wire, mm -hmm. disconnect them. Then we could attack the body to chassis mounts themselves. You already sprayed everything with PV Blast? I did, I did. So, you know, I've already gone ahead and checked a lot of the stuff to just come right apart for us. Uh, what we've got right here is some four by fours. We're gonna place these four by fours right underneath the bottom of these rockers. We're gonna make sure everything is sitting flat. And this way we can distribute that load like we were talking about. We're not gonna get any flex with the four by fours as we go ahead and we begin to lift up. We'll take a look at everything. We're gonna make sure that as we're lifting, we're gonna be checking to make sure nothing's attached and the body's coming off real good. If we start to hear any kind of binding or motions uh, that doesn't sound right or anything that doesn't look right, then we're gonna go ahead and stop and figure out where it is. Okay, this is a perfect example of what we were talking about. We thought we had every bolt already taken out of the car. And as we began to slowly lift it, we could tell that the rear of the car was not separating. So at that point in time, you stop, go like we talked about, go very, very slow when you're doing it. And then as we pulled everything apart out of the trunk, we noticed there were a couple of bolts that were hidden that we didn't see. So now we're gonna go ahead and take those out and then we're gonna slowly continue to keep raising. But this is very typical of what you're gonna find. So when you guys are doing this at home, make sure you take your time to go slow. And if you do those things, you won't have any issues because you are gonna run into a couple little stumbling blocks that you don't expect. That wasn't too bad. We brought the car back down, put it on the jack stands, just to take the pressure off the ratchet straps, keeping the body nice and straight. We don't want to come to any surprises in the morning. I want to thank Ron. He is the head of manufacturing here at Hemsaw. He's also a very good fabricator and mechanic. Doug, what do you think? Well, you know, Sam, I think it looks absolutely great. You know, the hardest part was watching you work, but uh, <laughs> you did 
fine job. You and Ron really knocked it out of the park. I tried to give you as much moral support as I could. You did good helping. You did no, You are I a little cleaner than we are, but you did yeah, good. Yeah, well, the problem is you guys keep the lift high, you know? I'm, <laughs> yeah. We don't want any mistakes, so we just yeah. keep the car away from you. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to measure the frame, get this thing ready to start building a chassis. We're going to get Joe involved, and you and Joe are going to knock this thing out. I can't wait to see the final product. I bet you're excited. I am very excited. You guys want to add some serious sound and horsepower to your car, you want to get rid of these crush bends on your exhaust system. If you have a 68 to 72 Chevelle, Pipes has a 304 stainless, three inch mandrel bent exhaust system for your car. Look at this very nice polished steel all the way throughout the exhaust system. And in the front, they even give you the options for the cutouts built into the system. Now the X-pipe that they give you is going to make for superior flow, reducing back pressure. As you can see, the pipes are all slip fit into each other, so it's going to make for an easy installation. The mufflers are also matched polished three inch with slip fits in them. They also come with all the hangers and the clamps you need to complete this exhaust and do it for yourself at home. So if you guys want to make some horsepower, reduce back pressure and have an all around good looking exhaust, make sure you check out Pipes Exhaust Systems because they've got them from 1950s to current. Now back to more Sam's Garage. Sam tests the Holly EFI system they're using on the Coyote engine for the 57 Ford Thunderbird. Before the engine goes in the car, Sam mocks everything up on the engine stand for testing. The Holly kit comes with everything you need to make this engine swap turnkey and reliable. This Thunderbird's gonna look so much better with all this primitive stuff out of here and that Coyote engine inside. It's gonna run good too because we're gonna be doing a Holly EFI on the Coyote engine. So let's go to the easy run engine test stand. You know, I was fortunate enough to be one of the first people to test out the Holly EFI system with the Commander 950 back in 1999. At that point, we made 850 horsepower on my Mustang with a 5.8 liter 351 Windsor. Very impressive and very streetable. The beauty of Holly is that they make it so simple for the DIYer to be able to build something like that Coyote, put it in a 57 Thunderbird, and not worry about whether it's going to crank up, run, or how it's going to drive. So we're going to show you today how to install a Holly EFI unit on a Coyote engine on the run stand. We're going to crank it up and then we're going to go through the software. You guys remember this engine, Doug and I were doing a leak down test on it. Look at it, how much better it looks. We painted it, we made it look a lot better. We went to Summit Racing, I got the Holly EFI system, but while I was there I went ahead and got these aluminum valve covers and their coil packs. That's going to make for a nice install on the 57. Now remember that when you guys paint your blocks, stay away from connectors and pins, and when you put it in the engine bay, make sure you scrape off ground points so you have good voltage. Now when you're looking at the table, you're probably thinking, man, that is intimidating, but it's really not that bad. We got four harnesses that make one once it's all connected together. We got the fuel injectors, the ignition coils, the main harness, and then the power harness. The most important thing is with the power harness to have a good, clean ground and power battery connection at the battery, all right? Because you're gonna have a signal with the pink and white wire for ignition turn on. So we're gonna go through the steps of installing this on our motor, and then we're gonna make it run, then we'll go through the software. Now I'm getting ready to install the variable valve timing sub harness. And this is very important to give you a separate book for this so that it tells you exactly where all these sensors are and actuators. There's four per bank, plus the crank position sensor down here. So do reference this. So I got the variable valve timing harness installed. Now I'm gonna go onto the main harness. This is basically gonna combine all three sub harnesses and then give me my throttle body connections and anything else that I'm missing, like crank position sensor and a couple of bank sensors for the variable valve timing. I've got all the harnesses connected, and because Ford is special, we've got uh, coil driver modules on each bank. Got those connected, kind of tucked in the way on the galley. Now, this thing looks like a mess, but this is an easy run engine test stand, so it's supposed to look like this. But in the car, it's gonna look a lot better. So now what I gotta do is constant red and ignition. Then I'm gonna hook up my power harness to the battery. I wanna hook up a ground to the head, which is right here, very important. As you can tell, I painted the block. So the Holly system wants a very, very good, clean ground connection. Okay, I've got everything connected on my Coyote engine. 
I've got the heads up display. I've gone through and answered all the questions. You do have to make sure to do a TPS calibration before this guy will ever fire. Now let's see what happens on this first run. I don't have a cooling system on it because really you could run it for 10 to 20 seconds all day long without water in it. That way you know everything is cool. You're not making a mess just in case there's a problem. Let's see what happens. Nothing like a little bit of fire out that exhaust. That is awesome. First try, Holly Coyote motor outside the car, running on an engine stand. Sam's Garage, presented by Hemsaw. Sam provides a more in-depth overview of the Holly EFI system they're using on the 57 Ford Thunderbird. Holly makes the entire process simple and easy to get up and running. The software included in the kit gives Sam full control over each individual setting for tuning and tweaking. It was pretty cool listening to this Coyote running. It's very simple too. Holly makes it simple for you DIYers at home with this heads up display. It gives you a stylus so you can easily hit the buttons as well. You want to go into the Wizard, you want to answer all the questions it asks you depending on what engine you have, whether you have nitrous or not, what map sensor you're using, the injectors, all those questions, camshafts. When you're all done, it's going to program the Holly and then you can fire it up from there. The base map is going to be plenty for you guys to be able to get this car running and have good drivability. They also give you check engine lights right here. If it was red, green, or blue, you'll know whether you have a problem or not. You can go into the installation manual and it'll tell you exactly what those colors correspond so you can diagnose your system. But let's say something like my Cadillac where I'm running nitrous. You can go into the laptop, download the software, then you got full control of the system. They give you a harness like this with pinouts where you got switches inside that you can control nitrous, fans, AC, everything through this connector. Also, the display they give you, they have a Three, a 5 inch, a 7 inch, and a 12 inch. Let's go check out the software on the laptop. All right, so once you've gone to Holly or Summit Racing and you purchased your USB cable to hook up to the harness, you can go in and download the software and then you could have complete control over everything. When I hook up nitrous, you need to go in and let's say you put 50 shot of nitrous, you want to remove at least one degree of timing. You can go into the computer where the inputs and outputs are with that harness that I showed you and you can basically tell it that when this switch is on, I want you to take out half a degree of timing or a degree of timing or two. You could go into your fly-by-wire pedal and you could pretty much open the throttle plate depending on how easy or hard the engine cranks when you're cranking it its first time. Let's say you have a really big cam and you need that throttle plate to open up a little bit more. You can go in here, take that 10, 12, and there you go. But let's say you crank the car and you've got a hot idle hanging for too long. That's gonna be your second one. You wanna keep that number around the same as the first one. And you only wanna go increments of one digit in this particular case. So let's say you wanted to go into your fuel injectors. You could go into the fuel graph right here. And the thing with Holly is that you got one fuel map, you got one ignition map. There aren't a bunch of sub menus. All right, so there's two modifiers for spark, let's say. One of them is gonna be for coolant temperature. If your coolant temperature gets to like, let's say 220, 230 degrees, you can go in and reduce a bunch of timing to keep the engine safe. If your air temperature, let's say you have a supercharger or a turbocharger, you could go in there and let's say your air temp gets to 150, 160, it's a little bit too high, you can reduce timing to keep your engine safe. Let's say you guys are running turbo or nitrous. Air fuel ratios are the most important thing you could do. Right here, you can go in just like you could on the heads-up display. You can go into the map and you can give your target air fuel idle, cruise, and wide open throttle. But not only that, you can go into the map itself and do all your increments. If you guys want fire coming out, you can even fix it to where you have fire coming out under D cell. The situation with my Cadillac, I couldn't get a crank sensor signal from it. Holly makes a timing trigger wheel that you can bolt onto the front of the engine and set up your parameters right here under custom. And you can pretty much tell it exactly what you want to do, what you're running, and where you're going to set it. You could tell it where you're going to have it, you could tell it its firing order, and you can pretty much dial in your own timing components. 
So with the Holly software, you pretty much get full control over your engine and you can do whatever you want. Most of those Street Outlaw guys, they're going fast with Holly. So if you guys want to go fast too and you want to be reliable and have peace of mind, you got to check out Holly EFI.